Good morning. Do not adjust your set. This is really what we're wearing. We have gone all out today and there is a reason why. It's Thursday the 20th of July and you are indeed watching The Colour Explosion. That is Ireland AM on Virgin Media 1. Yes, this morning, of course, we are going green and orange. It yeah, looks good when it's kind of split screen. OK, when we're not uh, too in your face. Of course, um, for the girls in green today. But yeah. if green is not your shade of colour, then we've got a bit of pink too. Plenty of pink as well. First up, we're looking ahead to the Irish women's debut down under as they take on Australia in the Women's World Cup. It is happening in just a few hours. The countdown is on four hours, under four hours. 11 o'clock kickoff. Uh, and never mind bending it like Beckham, we are learning how to kick it like Katie McCabe in a football lesson with a pair of Vera Pau prodigies. And we're heading live to Australia to meet the Irish fans flying the flag for our girls in green down under. Now our big super fan <laughs> over there. That. What Iron else that. is coming up hey. out? Oh, I must get the steamer out. Oh, yeah. Lord, look at that. Look at so we're barely here, never mind, for you for the never flag. mind ironing the flag. Love it. <laughs> From our girls in green to the iconic women in pink ahead of its release this weekend, we're finding out if the Barbie movie we're in the Barbie movie. Yeah. You loved I it? I loved it. I was crying, I was laughing. Loved it. Crying at the Barbie movie? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, very good. Now we're going to be finding out if it did live up to the hype and we're in loved it uh, with our Barbie beauty look that is simply dollicious. You get it? Here we go. We're here till 10. Now, our weatherman Derek is on the road again this morning. Derek, what's, where are you and what's happening this morning? Yes, good morning. Uh, we're live here in Kimmage in Dublin 12, right across the morning. It's a showery start to the northwest, but elsewhere holding pretty decent. That mixture of light rain and bright spells to take us right across your Thursday. But as you mentioned, guys, a big day for Irish football, a big day for the girls in green taking on joint host nation Australia. Uh, the first round group B of the FIFA Women's World Cups. So we're going to be paying a visit to Lourdes Celtic FC. We're going to be having a kick around with the gang. And getting a taster of the build up the excitement ahead of the game later on the things or later on this afternoon so basically uh, it's a bit of a hoodie it's a party at 8am in the morning in Kimmage come down if you're in this neck of the woods it's going to be fun <laughs> unbelievable ok that's the challenge this morning Derek if you are in Kimmage keep an eye out for our roving weatherman great stuff Derek thank you very much for football right through the show this morning there's lots of excitement ahead of the match at 11 o'clock but now it is time to get over to the Virgin Media News Hub here is Anne O'Donnell Thanks, Tommy. Good morning. Well, there's just hours to go to the Republic of Ireland's opening match against Australia in the Women's World Cup in Sydney. And as you heard, the opening, the kickoff is at 11 a.m. this morning, Irish time. But for more on this now, we can go live to our reporter, Paul Quinn, who's in Sydney for us. And the team has plenty of support out there this morning. Paul. Look, and there's huge support down under for the Irish team. As you say, kick-off in uh, just under four hours now. We're uh, out here at the stadium. There's a few fans starting uh, to mill around, a couple of Irish and a couple of uh, Aussie fans also. Some 82,000 uh, people will be here in this stadium behind me watching the girls in green taking on uh, the Matildas at 11am Irish time. Of course, this is a historic day for Irish uh, women's soccer, football, for Irish for. Ireland indeed and you know this is Ireland one of eight teams uh first time ever in the Women's World Cup. There's 32 teams in total, 64 games over the next couple of weeks and the opening matches here in Australia and in New Zealand. Now, as I say, 82,500 people. It's estimated that potentially up to a third of them could be uh, Irish supporters here tonight, given the amount that have travelled over from Ireland and also the number of Irish people that are living here down under. Demand for tickets has been insane. There's a number of fan zones that would have been set up across Sydney uh, to allow people to watch the games and I know that there's a number of watch parties taking uh, place at home in Ireland um, as well. Now, yesterday in the uh, pre-match press conference, Captain Katie McCabe saying that this isn't just about making history, but this is about uh, providing a legacy. And, you know, the, the team are looking forward to young girls, young boys waking up in Ireland this morning, turning on the telly and seeing the girls in green walk out onto the pitch. Michael D. Higgins, the president, also uh, issuing a letter to the team in the last uh, couple of hours as well, well uh, wishing them well, talking about their outstanding achievement to getting this point and the inspiration that the team are providing to everyone back home in Ireland. But as I say, kick-off in just under four hours' time. Uh, over the cross the morning, we'll be catching up with some of those die-hard Irish fans and bringing you all the latest. Thanks, Paul, for bringing us the latest on the build-up. 
Well, a gunman has been ki has killed two people at a construction site in Auckland in New Zealand as the nation prepared to host a number of games in the FIFA Women's World Cup tournament. Authorities say a police officer and four civilians were injured. The New Zealand Prime Minister has spoken out to reassure the public that the situation is now under control ahead of the tournament, which is being co-hosted by both both New Zealand and Australia. Clearly with the FIFA World Cup kicking off this evening, there are a lot of eyes on Auckland. The government's spoken to FIFA organisers this morning and the tournament will proceed as planned. I want to reiterate that there is no wider national security threat. This appears to be the actions of one individual. Auckland, Aucklanders and those watching around the world can be assured that the police have neutralised the threat. High temperatures are still causing huge difficulties for residents and tourists in southern Europe. But wildfires near Athens in Greece have not yet been brought under control. Here's the latest. The damage caused so far by the wildfires in Greece is clear to see from the air. Many residents have been evacuated from their homes and properties. Fires are still burning on three fronts around Athens, with strong gusts of wind and soaring temperatures making them hard to control. Water dropping planes and helicopters have been trying to bring fires under control on three fronts around Athens, with strong gusts of wind and soaring temperatures making the situation more difficult. Italy and France have already seen new record-breaking temperatures this week, but it's not just Europe feeling the heat. So too are China and Japan, and the US is suffering still, seeing extreme temperatures with much of the southern US under a heat warning for days now. Marie Mulcahy, Virgin Media News. The Ukrainian president Vladimir Zelensky is accusing Russia of deliberately targeting grain deal infrastructure after a massive attack on the southern port city of Odessa. Kyiv said the Russian strikes destroyed about 60,000 tons of grain meant for export. The attack comes after Russia withdrew Black Sea from the Black Sea Grain Initiative on Monday. Well, in his nightly address, Mr Zelensky also spoke about Ireland after the Taoiseach's visit to Ukraine. Ireland is one of our most vigorous partners in Europe. Although the country is neutral, the Irish do not remain neutral to moral challenges. In the face of such aggression, they are clearly on the bright side of history. They are helping us politically, in security issues, economically and with sanctions. Humanitarian support is very important. We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. Thank you, Chair, and a very good morning. We're live here in Kimmage in Dublin 12, right across the morning. We're actually here in Sun Drive Park. We're off to pay a visit to Lourdes Celtic FC, uh, all the club down here ahead of the big uh, match later on as Ireland take on Australia in the first round of the World Cup later on this morning. So lots of fun, lots of excitement on the way over the next couple of hours. Now, let's take an opening look at weather together with Conan Doyle with us on cameras this morning. We're on to the 20th of July, and it's a pretty decent start out there this morning. Now, we are seeing a couple of hit scattered shares into parts of South Donegal North Fermanagh in around Mughal there in County Leitrim but elsewhere holding pretty decent good day cloud cover limited bright breaks now on the breakfast menu in those light to locally moderate northwesterly winds now right across the day not a bad one in store out there this Thursday they will be uh, that mixture really of sunshine and some scattered showers to take us right across the day those winds will veer to the west temps a degree up on where we were yesterday highs there of around 16 to 19 degrees warmest through the southeast, and finally, then tonight mainly dry and settled. We will see cloud cover build through Corinth and into also some patchy light rain, some patchy light drizzle there to take us through tonight into your Friday morning with overnight lows there back to nine to fourteen degrees. So that's how it's shaping up here in a dry and settled Kimmage in Dublin Twelve at the moment. We'll be back again live seven thirty-five. Chill insurance work harder so you can work smarter. We compare fourteen quotes to get you the best deal. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We're going to start with the Irish Times. It's headline, 
No further action in majority of BlackRock abuse cases. Gardaí have said there will be no further investigative action into the majority of alleged clerical sex abuse cases at BlackRock College and Willow Park schools. Higher earners and the young bearing brunt of rental crisis. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. Younger people and higher earners are worse off here than the rest of Europe when it comes to housing costs. The examiner leads with scale of nursing home sex abuse unknown. Safeguarding Ireland has warned. The accurate number of older people who are being sexually abused is unknown due to disbelief that this abuse actually happens. It's official. We are building far too few homes is the top story on the Daily Mail. Internal documents from the Department of Finance found 50,000 homes are needed annually to meet demand. The Herald goes with Judge Slam's outrageous fees in Mago case. Judge Alex Owens has told Kinahan cartel target James Mago Gately that he can have free legal aid of a maximum of €14,000 in his battle with the Criminal Assets Bureau. The star leads with dead sneaky. Nephew of deceased uncle has pleaded guilty to attempting to deceive a post office worker after trying to collect a 246 euro pension belonging to Pallor Doyle. And the Sun also covers this story with on post mortem. And the mirror goes with Shoutrage. Guinness, Smithix, Carlsberg, and Rockshore have been hit with a four cent plus VAT increase as Diageo have increased its pricing for the second time this year. And of course, given our colours, the front pages of a lot of the papers this morning, of course, are for the girls in green match today against yes. Australia today. But I was wondering, I just questioned, like, there's not the same, like, the pullouts and the, the poster of the girls. I mean, I know there was that before, weeks before, but the day of the game, I just thought that... You found one in the sun, right? The but sun has the... got, uh, yes, all the fixtures. And also, we were just talking here, and our floor manager, Anne, she's like, I can't get a jersey anywhere. Can't find an Irish jersey anywhere. There's loads of... Um, GA jerseys and then there's loads of um, Ireland rugby jerseys but couldn't get um, so what do you think about the build up what do you think has been going on has it been big enough 0896 triple one triple one we would love to hear from you uh, still to come we're analysing Ireland's chances of course uh, to go as far as they possibly can at the World Cup uh, glory ahead of their debut match against the hosts Australia this morning. Amazing, yeah. Okay, we're going to be talking all those things after this short break. 0896 triple one triple one. See you. Later. Well, it's show time for Ireland as they waltz with the Matildas in their historic World Cup opener in just a few hours. He's moved us around so that we're in the right order for the flag because his OCD is going, so it feels weird. Now, looking back on their incredible journey to success and ahead to this morning's opening game is Dan McDonald from the Irish Independent. And live from Australia in the stadium is editor of the journal, Sinead O'Carroll. Good morning to you both. It is so lovely to have you here. It, Dan, it just feels kind of magic. There's something, you know, going on. Everyone's kind of excited around this uh, this morning. But let's talk about what this team has gone through in the last six years. Like, they, you know, they didn't have kit, they didn't have changing rooms in 2017. And now they're at a World Cup. Like, the development has been phenomenal. Yeah, it's surreal. Like, you see the, um, the footage of the team arriving into the airport. And if you think that in 2017, and maybe the nadir of that whole time was the team speaking about having to change their track suits in airports when they come back, you know, that, you know, there are players in this squad who've been through that experience where it's sort of out of sight, out of mind. And to come from that point to now, what, 75,000 people in the stadium today, a sort of an entourage, like, you know, the camera crews following through the airport that maybe, you know, you know, the men's team might take some of this for granted. Um, mm -hmm. But for them, I think even the profile of this team now, um, there are some new faces, but a lot of them have been around and they've been through the worst days and now I guess they're living the best ones. You think of Jack Charlton and what, the impact that he had on Irish teams in the past and how the buzz and all, they almost um, punched well above themselves. We, we're seeing that with Vera Pau at the moment as well. How special is he? Cause, uh, is she? Because you know she's had her own controversies, but she's trying to put that all behind her and bring out the best in these girls. Yeah, and like you know, sometimes I think maybe in football in Ireland you need to you need to shake the going back all the time to exactly, Italia ninety yeah. and Euro eighty eight, and yet you can't avoid the parallels. You know, someone coming in, so a new face to the country has taken a team and made them pretty hard to beat, and they've they've made that landmark step to this tournament stage and and. 
they're up against it. There is no doubt that they're up against it. Yeah. But in a way, they're up against it to get here. And they're just going to have to draw on the same attributes that got them here yeah. to, to stay here. So, um, and of course, yeah, we're waiting to see what the long-term impact, of course, will be too, which is the next step of it. And the next generation, and that's something that's really mm -hmm. exciting, I think, for young footballers who are looking forward to this. But let's get to where our boots are on the ground. And that is uh, Sinead O'Carroll, who is in her very much journalistic capacity uh, right now. She's got no bias whatsoever. Sinead, what's the atmosphere like in the, in the lead-up to this uh, match with Australia? So... Australians are mad about their Matildas. So like across the city in Sydney, like I came out of the train station the other day and I was just greeted with a huge big image across a glass skyscraper of Mary Fowler. Um, there's lots of chat, you know, getting into cabs and everything. There's lots of chat about the World Cup. I met some guys who were going to do Barbenheimer today and they were really disappointed that they had messed up and won't be able to watch the football tonight. Um, so, yeah, there's really good vibes, but there are so many Irish around the city. Sam Kerr said yesterday in a press conference that, you know, she was really excited to play in a stadium where over 75,000 people would be rooting for Australia. And I was thinking... Sam did not get the message about how many Irish people are going to be in the stadium today. We're thinking that it'll be probably over 25,000 Irish people uh, in Stadium Australia today. The atmosphere was already building in Sydney when I was leaving. We're, we're here in the stadium now in the press room, but the atmosphere was already building in the city as I was leaving there this morning. So, um, yeah, I can imagine there'll be there'll be thousands of uh, strong Irish voices by the time 8pm rolls around. Uh, it's mad because we moan all the time on this show about how many Irish doctors and nurses and <laughs> teachers <laughs> and everybody <laughs> leaves to go off to Australia. But this is their chance to put the green jersey on and do Ireland people, you know, the whole country so proud and really cheer on the girls. And they are, and there's people coming for loads of reasons. So I talked to as many people as possible this morning to see why they had come. So loads of people from Melbourne and lots of soccer fans, lots of people who have followed this particular team, but loads of people who also were like, you know, I, I wanted to come and have the Irish party. And then other people who did just say they wanted to put on the jersey and support the women. Um, like one, one, one girl said to me, I wouldn't have paid for a flight to watch the men's, but I thought it was important that I could do it for the women. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a specific uh, audience for this team as well. Um, and this team have given a lot of themselves to that audience as well. They're really, really good to the fans and they really are thoughtful about their legacy and about, you know, wanting to grow the grassroots game here and making sure that they are inspiring younger girls. Um, I met a 12-year-old here who's here with her parents because her parents... Uh, promised that if they qualified, they could go to the World Cup. Um, and they kept the promise. So the three girls are here with their parents. And that girl used to practice after watching YouTube clips of men playing football. And now because she has got to know all of these women, she's able to, you know, navigate women's football. So now she watches YouTube clips of girls playing football and goes out and practices the skills she's seen there. So that's a huge uh, shift yeah. uh, in just a few years on uh, like so you know, the, the girls are making yeah. that legacy that they want to make. Um, we just saw photos there um, and drone footage of, uh, I think it was Irish people who were in Australia and they Come did on, the hashtag Koi gig, which they just got together and did in a Sydney. shape of themselves. It's fantastic Amazing. to see that. But let's talk about the actual match tonight because they're opening up against the hosts. The Matildas are a phenomenal team. Uh, what does Ireland need to do today to get the best possible result? Yeah, like there's two things kind of happening at once uh, this evening. Like there's this big moment, you know, huge sellout. That the stadium is so vast, it's sold out. So and it's the first time Ireland are at a world women's World Cup. So there's that moment has to happen, and we really have to enjoy that, and we have to, you know, really cherish it for what it is. That historic, brilliant achievement. But then the match starts, and then there's going to be ninety something minutes where we have to try and keep a very attack-minded Australia team quiet and hopefully nick something ourselves at the end. It's a really tough ask. There's kind of two scenarios that play out in my mind that we do settle into it well, that we could, um, what Amber Barrett calls, park the bus. They're, they do enjoy defending this team and they don't mind um, sitting back that little bit uh so if they can do that maybe for 60 minutes and frustrate Australia, I think there is a way that we could get a draw out of this game. But Australia are so strong. They have so many good players, not just Sam Kerr, not just Mary Fowler. They've really pacey wingers. Yeah. Um, so there is a scenario that, you know, we we could take a 
Come on, Sinead. Lost, we got this. I'm, I'm trying to be more optimistic, but I mean, you this know, is a world just to Cup. keep people's expectations in check. In every sport, you know, when Ireland go to a World Cup and soccer, especially one of those ones, we have, you know, we've outperformed. You think of against Italy, you think of some amazing mm. results in years gone by. So, I mean, yes, Ireland are 22nd in the rankings, Australia 6th, Canada 6th. Like, it is a difficult mm. group. But do you think the hype and the buzz around it that we could see the girls maybe try and sneak some results? I'm or? feeling your optimism here. Like, I think, look, it is the group of death. I know it's, and, and we, we always look at things through Irish eyes, but even listening to some of the more neutral previews from around the world, that is the common view, that this is a, a testing group. But okay. I suppose the one thing is that like Vera Pau's side, have gone to Sweden and got results. They've taken on difficult games to prepare them for this. They are a defensive team and yeah. they are in a group where they need to defend. Um, and it's true, there's pressure on Australia. The other two teams in the group, Canada and Nigeria, have had interrupted preparations, a bit of internal strife. So I think Ireland just need to get through today, you and know, and then, and then sort of get some confidence from it and then see where they can go in the rest of the competition. And we shouldn't get away from the fact that even just qualifying, given where Ireland were back just, what, six five, years six ago. years ago. Yeah, I know. Actually, yeah. qualifying for this World Cup is a remarkable statement Phenomenal. as well. Yeah, no, that's it. It's, and it, they don't want it just to be like a once-off adventure, yes. although there is a... That vibe is around it, um, but... It's about that vibe, more it's not than just that. The, yeah, because that vibe is always there. We're going on tour in Europe and the Euros yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It's great to have that. But I don't know, there just feels like there's some sort of belief around them as well. Like, in six years, what they've done has been absolutely amazing. Yeah. Sinead, we're going to be annoying you for the next couple of weeks, obviously, um, for uh, all uh, the colour, but also what's going on with the team. We hope that you enjoy every second of it and uh, and you can get your jersey on when you get out of the press room. Uh, Sinead Carroll from <laughs> the journal. <laughs> Thanks Thank so you much. so much. And Daniel McConnell from the Irish Independent. Thank you Thank for you. joining Cheers, us. Dan. Cheers, Enjoy the game. Thanks for staying with us now. It's time to take a look into this morning's headlines. And joining us now is News Talk's Andre Gilligan. Good morning to morning. you, Andre. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're going to start with those shootings in Auckland. Tell us what yeah. happened. Uh, it's three people killed, five others injured. Um, happened in Auckland, New Zealand. And, of course, on the opening match day, day yeah, yeah, of the uh, the Women's Soccer World Cup in the, in the city as well. Their co-hosts. Uh, the Prime Minister has been out, Chris Hopkins. He said that, look, it's, an, it's an, um, an individual isolated incident. There's no political or ideological threat. There's going to be no change to the national security um, uh, situation there. There's basically no national security risk is, yeah. is what he's saying and tournament will proceed as planned. Yeah, of course, a country there. that has come through uh, terrorist yeah. attacks Absolutely, uh, yeah. And that's mm. what was, was, uh, that was the fear, I suppose, yeah. In, in the early hours of this happening um, and that it might perhaps change plans around the, the tournament, but, but that's no. not going to be the case. I know. Um, uh, awful for this. Terrible. The and the perpetrator well. was under home detention, he but had he had been, an exemption to go to this site. work on a, work on a construction site, site yeah. And yeah. Um, he, had, he was in a position to do that through this exemption that he had. He was able to work on the construction site, but yeah. 24 years of age and not yeah. yet identified. Absolutely horrendous yeah. that, that, uh, that that has happened. Now we're going to move closer to home. Um, for something that no I, I, I genuinely think it's like, what? Yeah, we all know this. So this is about <laughs> building. We're building far too home, too few homes. Andrea. Yeah, we're building too few homes. It's two different housing stories out today. This was that first one in the in the Daily um, the Daily Mail this morning, and what they have found is that. We're due, according to the Housing for All blueprint, to build, the plan being to build an average of about 34,000 homes across about a nine-year period. What mm. they're saying in the Daily Mail this morning is we actually need about 50,000 per year to meet the demand. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're obviously falling short. These are internal documents from the Department of Finance that have mm. been obtained by the Daily Mail. Um, and no major surprise, we need to be building more and more and more houses. But there's obviously, you know, huge costs associated with that. There are rising costs in terms of inflation, mm. the cost materials as well. Um, but I, I don't think, as you said, Murrin, that'll come as any major surprise no. to people that no. we need to be building more homes. No. The I other interesting, I suppose, element of all of this today when we talk about home ownership and um, 
the appetite for home ownership here in Ireland. There's the ESRI, the Economic and Social Research mm -hmm. Institute. Their report is out this morning too. And what they have found is that we actually have one of the biggest gaps in Western Europe in terms of home ownership and the numbers of people in home ownership between the young and the old. Yeah. So what they found is that nearly close to about 80% of people over the age of 40 in this country own their own home, mm. but only a third of younger people, only a third of people under the age of 40 are homeowners uh, in this country. Um, about a quarter of 25 to 34 year olds. They also reveal today in the research this like a quarter of 25 to 34 year olds Still in Ireland living at home, living at home with mm. their parents. And yeah. what's interesting in this research, because normally when we talk about these figures over the past two years, we cite the pandemic and, you know, the COVID restrictions has been one of the mm. reasons as to why that has changed. But actually this research was carried out back in 2019. So it's the year that is absolutely nothing, nothing. to do with the COVID pandemic or, yeah. or with restrictions. Um, we've one of the lowest shares as well of young adults in this country under the age of 40 living outside their parental home, outside of the, the family home too. Just, so, But then at the same time, we are seeing that prices, like after the day came out report, that prices are coming down for house, to buy a house. Now, they, slightly, I know slightly. But then it does say here that with this, that homes here are, are, are as yeah, affordable and, as in many other Western European yeah, countries. I know, and that's, that is, I suppose, an element of the research. And I, I was just going to touch on that as well. Like, our affordability um, issues, if you want to call it that, in this country, what the ESRI are saying today is they're actually no different to a lot of other Western yeah, European countries. countries. And that might come as a surprise to yeah. a lot of people. Yes, house prices are high, but our scenar the scenario across other Western European areas... Is that they're is, exactly the yeah, same. Yeah, it's not that but different to here. They're down 12% in the UK. They're down 10% in Germany. They've come down 25%, I think it is, in New Zealand. Now, they were, that's from a very high yeah, rate. So when you're at yeah. a high, high... Because, because of everything that's obviously been happening with uh, mm. interest rates. But there was something just that I thought was a really an, an amazing point about, like, it's so... It's just really depressing but there was an economist a couple of weeks ago and his name escapes me and he was just saying wouldn't it be lovely if we could get the IDA to stop going out looking for foreign direct investment just for a couple of years and because we're at, we're at full employment lads we're at full employment if we can just charge. if we can just hold on and stop building data centers for a while we've got so many jobs here and if we could move those people towards construction like start building homes is that realistic for a while but sure there's no place for anyone to live the other like elements the american chamber talk all the time going we can't well, yeah, we can't set up in ireland there's no place for no. anyone to live it's also i suppose you know if, if it opens a broader um conversation as well around the types of homes that we're building and like we're not a country that tends to build up we don't no. build up enough at all no, we, don't we don't build enough you know apartment we, we condo like houses style. Here. Yeah, yeah apartments we like our that houses. you see in, yeah. in other in other mm. countries and and that is a barrier to many people and particularly if you're you know as one person or a single person uh, looking to buy a home everybody appears to want the three bed semi detached with the back garden mm -hmm. and and there's issues then obviously around land and yeah and, and but per square foot it's quite expensive to build an apartment in ireland as it is anyway we're going into construction yeah. costs now Let's well, let us that. know are you still living at home do you own your own <sighs> house were you thinking of buying your own house and didn't buy it because you're just holding on to because, well, interest rates as well at the moment. Absolutely. I think that is yeah. stopping it's people huge... actually making the pl making oh, the, the, the to decision to buy a house. Yeah. yeah. Like it's 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 unbelievable the difference in interest rates. Like ours has just jumped so much. Yeah, if we so wanted much. to buy, like it's gone in crazy. Let us know. Uh, let's talk about the affordability in Ireland. This is a really good story. <laughs> no one can go to Taylor Swift well, because no one can afford to. They can. It's sold out. What? You, you're going to not... be waiting by your laptop all no, day. The pre-sale is starting. I. Today. My, my fella woke up when I was getting up this morning going, do you have the code? Do you need me to take your um, your Ticketmaster um, login so I can do this for you? Do you know what you have to do to get Isn't these tickets? Isn't very good at five o'clock well, in the morning? Well, he wants them. He wants the he tickets. Wants to go to... Now, what is going on? How yeah, much so, are these tickets? Because so, they're going on pre-sale today. Yeah, so like this, this all kicked off, I'd say, about nearly a month ago where you had to pre-register, um, you know, to get one of the coveted emails that yes. allowed yeah, you to have access to the today to get the pre-sale yeah. tickets. Uh, I'm well aware of this because I've been in this hunt myself and unfortunately wasn't lucky enough, Mern, to get... Oh, did you not get No, your... I didn't get the oh. pre-code access email. One of my friends did. Did so... you go to her in reputation in Crow Park? No. 
See, that's, there you go. Yeah. Then I'm like, I'm not a real fan. You're not a real fan, <laughs> guys. <laughs> yeah. You're none of you want to put you on. Now. You're jumping on the hype. Kim yeah. yeah. Kardashian didn't like her, <laughs> none of you liked her. <laughs> but anyway, aside from all of that, um, I was hoping to get the tickets, like many other people, don't have the access code for today. If yeah. you did get the email with the special access code, you have pre-sale access to purchase tickets um, for her gigs over the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They're going to go on sale from 11 o'clock in the morning for the Friday, June 28th yeah. show, 1 p.m. for the Saturday, and then they go on sale for 3 p.m. 3 p.m. today yep. if you want to buy tickets for a Sunday. And how much Hershey. could you be paying? You mm. will start paying, I don't know who is going to be lucky enough to get the tickets that start at 86 euro. Right. God knows where you'll be for 86 I, euro. Beyond the gates. General <laughs> standing. Um, underneath the Aviva. Yeah, general, be in the walkway underneath. No, but the general standing tickets, which are, I suppose, the most common tickets that yeah. people will yeah. go to buy. 100 and 26 euro. If you want to stand slightly to the right or the left, uh, also in a standing ticket, you're talking about 206 That's euro. These just tickets to stand to the right or left of the, of the stage. stage. So the yeah. rest of the standing area is 120. 126 euro. I think they're incredibly expensive tickets. 206 euro. I just, I, and I, I cannot, I'm not. I'm, now we yeah, do have will, to say they started at 86, started but, we 86 but we don't know how many 86. And where tickets. are you? I know when you're sitting there going, do you blame Ticketmaster? Do you blame the people who are running the concert in Ireland, or do you blame Taylor? Because it's ridiculously expensive, and Coldplay are being announced as well. And you're like, how can people afford to go and see these experiences anymore? Yeah. And I know it's where they make their money now because no one's buying albums. But 126 still. euro for the general standing pitch tickets. I yeah. think it is really going to preclude people. And she's a lot of a young, young. following. Young fans, oh, and totally. if you're a family, can you imagine yeah. a family now trying Have to get three or four, four girls? Tickets? Or, yeah. or Absolutely. Four. And if you wanted a VIP tickets, ticket, a ticket, it can seven, go up to seven hundred and forty-three I quid. I would want to, at a minimum, be going for dinner with Taylor Swift. <laughs> for that yeah. Well, they're like, Do you know what? I can't buy a house. I'm going to go for a VIP package for Taylor Swift. Oh eight nine six triple one triple one. If you're looking for those tickets today, how are you feeling? Because it is expensive. Andrea Gilligan, Andrea, thank, thank you, thank you, so, you so much. much. From uh, lunchtime live on News Talk. That'll be at twelve o'clock today. Coming up, Paul Quinn is joining us live from Australia along alongside the Irish soccer fans who have followed Vera's, Vera's army down under. See you back here in a few minutes. Hello, welcome back to Ireland AM. We are hoping to connect with Paul Quinn, who is in Australia uh, with Irish fans. We can see him. We can we see just, him. We, just, we just can't hear him. So we're just working on that uh, right now. But we're going to chat. We're going to fill some time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah? If you haven't spotted <laughs> that we are dressed up. In, green, uh, it's like a bit the, of green and white and the orange. It's like the Irish flag vomited yeah. over us I did, this morning. I did Barbie as but, well, because, uh, you know, why we not? We might as well get into the time. spirit of it, but it so is we so are exciting. playing Australia today. Yes, I And we're hoping well for a draw, maybe. Well, yes, listen, I think that Australia are one of the favourites for the competition, yeah. particularly the fact that their home team, it is in front of 82,000 people in the Sydney uh, Stadium, which is the second biggest match, uh, second biggest crowd ever for a women's game. Mm -hmm. So to think that Ireland are going to their first ever World Cup, to that their op opening match, no yeah. pressure, is 82,000 no people. But actually, what we were chatting to Sinead O'Carroll from the Journal, who was over there at the minute, and she just said the throngs of Irish supporters have flown in from New Zealand, from Australia, yeah. all over. But are every, there to everyone support. has an Irish connection in Australia. So who's she, any interest in it? We I was hoping there'd be 20,000 Irish supporters there. I mean, there was an Irish person at home and away. We're basically part of the furniture there. But it is <laughs> estimated that 4,000 fans travelled from here. So it's not just the people who are travelling from Perth and travelling from Auckland and everything like that. Uh, there are a huge amount of people who have gone. And what we would like you to do right now is if you're at home and if your kids have gone absolutely mad, yes. decorated the whole oh, place yeah. and they're getting really excited for today, or if something's happened in your office, if you've got any pictures for us, we would love for you to send them to us. 0896 triple one triple one. Did you dress up like this? Better dress flags like up. Have you got the dog dressed up in the green jersey? Let oh. us know. We'd love to see it. Now, let's get over to Sydney because we do have Paul Quinn, who is live okay. there with a bunch of Irish supporters. Paul, how are we getting on? What's the atmosphere like? <laughs> well, look, the atmosphere here is amazing in Sydney. Uh, in a, just under four hours, less than four hours, the game will kick off here between Ireland and Australia. Uh, this is a momentous occasion and we're joined here by a group of uh, friends who met in college who've made the journey down under. Tell us, how did this all come about? 
Well, like you said, we're a group of six friends who met in WIT um, and we've remained friends since. And on our 30th birthday, we decided, you know what, we're going to save and go for a trip for a lifetime for our 40th. And COVID hit for our 40th, so that gives you an idea of our age. And then, I suppose, the girls qualified and we said, that's it, that's the trip for a lifetime. And here we are, we've made it as far as Sydney. You got here on Tuesday. What's the atmosphere been like? What's, you know, how have you been enjoying it? Oh, it's been absolutely brilliant. We went out to meet the girls in the airport yesterday. Such a good atmosphere out there. Come back in uh, to Darling Harbour. There was loads of Irish supporters around Darling Harbour and the Opera House. So absolutely fantastic. What did you make of the access that people had at the airport to the team when they came off the plane? Like, I, they, they spent a lot of time chatting with fans and their families, Rob. They did, yeah. It was absolutely brilliant to get so close to them. Um, yeah, I think they were a bit shocked themselves when they seen us there as well, that we were that close and how many of us were out there. So, yeah, it was it was brilliant. And they were so good. And, you know, they did stop to chat to us and got loads of autographs and everything. So, yeah, really good. So tell us, what have you been kind of up to for the last couple of days? How how manic has it been? Have you slept at all? How's the jet lag? <laughs> It's, we're finding it hard today, but we're going to we're going to push through it today. Now, um, today is um, we've ju we've just been everywhere. We've been just meeting a lot of people here. We've relatives here as well. Um, we've be we have been chasing the team around a little bit, like fanatics. <laughs> we don't get out much. We have left behind we've left behind four husbands, nine kids, and um, I just think that it's just it's just something that. Um, we, we decided that we had to do it and we're all involved in soccer and, and sport actually we're all involved in sport um, quite big back home and um, all involved in uh, soccer we had a coach Jenny plays soccer still and uh, Darmo here plays up in Brisbane but I think um, we're all involved at home and what's going on at home in women's soccer and girls soccer at a grassroots level is phenomenal we probably won't realise what's the, out the impact of this until after the World Cup and what Vera and the girls have achieved win, lose or draw they have got to this stage and put themselves um, out there for everyone to see and um, we're already planning the next four years where we're going and what we're doing girls because even Katie McCabe yesterday was saying you know it's not just about making history that it's about a legacy and you know all those young boys and girls who'll be waking up this morning turning on their tellies watching the game like that's gonna like it's their Italia 90 really isn't it yeah it is absolutely right like my three kids play soccer uh, with Dunshockle Newts and um, yeah they love it um, so yeah they'll be up this morning now watching it already yes yeah, so I tell us, you, it's also very special day for you as well it's not just not just Australia uh, taking on Ireland here why <laughs> explain exactly yeah I got married a year ago um, to my husband now yeah one year anniversary today um, I've sent him a picture of our flag and said happy anniversary so yeah <laughs> What's the plans for the next couple of days or how long are you here for? Does it all depend on the results? Or? Well, we are um, here until Sunday and um, we have hired a camper van, six of us in it, um, best friends for life or just for this trip, we'll see. <laughs> and uh, we're heading up to Brisbane. We um, It just didn't work out to go to Perth, but we'll be there. We'll be stopping off along the way. We'll have our place to be. We'll be donning the, the hats and and the flags and we'll head up to Brisbane and we, we'll, we'll check them out up there as well and uh, depending on well look we're, we're heading home supposedly after that but you never know how do we think the match is going to go what would be what would be a win here for us uh, look we're all hopeful I suppose all the hearts would say we'd love 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 a win but I don't know maybe a draw at this we take a draw maybe at this stage but it'd be brilliant I mean first game you never know in international football it'd be brilliant if we could get get the win or get a draw I'll kick off in a couple of hours and then it's all to play for um, great excitement here the, the crowd is starting to build I'm seeing a lot of yellow there for the Matildas but no doubt that uh, Sea of Green is making its way here to Stadium Australia Brilliant, Brilliant. Thank so. you so much Paul Listen, enjoy the match and congratulate well done to everybody who is there supporting with the, yeah. the green, white and orange on this morning Great they all amazing. decided to go What an amazing first anniversary to your husband How are you love him? How I'm with love? the girls <laughs> Bye I love, the flag, I love it though. Listen. And of course there are so many parties happening uh, happening across the country this morning. We'd love to see pictures of how you're showing your support for our girls in green. Yeah, so do send us messages on 0896 111 And I suppose it's important to say if you are sending photographs of your children, please do let us know in the message that you are their legal guardian, just to be on the safe side of things. Come on, you girls yeah, in green. Come on, We're you girls really green. buzzing More for them. Them. After this break, we'll see you in a few minutes. Great.
Hello, you're very welcome back to Ireland then, where we were this morning. Are we the right side for the wrong side, getting all caught up in the football fever this morning and uh, a bit of a lavender haze? We are indeed. We're going to be creating wreaths to help you fall off to sleep with Catherine Carton at 8.15. Hello, Catherine, I how are you? i making some lavender wreaths. I've got lots of fresh lavender. Nice and relaxing and calm here. This, this smells, smells amazing. Oh, yeah, my car smells amazing oh. this morning driving over. Yeah. Is this the thing that you think people could genuinely do and it's going to be lovely? Absolutely, it's really easy. You're going to have a go. I have made one. It's Can not Can I show perfect. people yeah. this? Because it looks yeah. incredible. And bear in mind, mine really? isn't like a pro. It's a bit wildy looking, but... Yeah. I, you always yeah. say that about your stuff and it is so good. So we've got one of these things yeah. and this is so good. I'm looking forward to that. So yes. we're going to be doing that in just a little while. Thank you, right. Thank Come you. Come on, uh, keep you uppies here. Now from the Green Fingers to our girls in green, myself and Alan are going to be trying to keep you uppy with the next I generation of Katie McCabe's. Oh, no. Uh, I forgot me runners. That's coming up at 9.45. Alan. Yeah. You're going to love this, aren't you? No, I'm keep going. first to be in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm going to love that later on. Now Alberto Rossi is serving up a football feast for anyone who's going to be watching the matches this morning because this is quite simple to do but really tasty. But yes, it's very tasty. What are you going to do for We're going to do eggs benedict and we're going to make them in all different ways. Easy enough. You know, when you watch the game, you can eat the eggs. It's always healthy for breakfast and everything. So I'm just making sure that the water to poach the egg, it's working out. This okay. is the thing. It's yeah. a poaching the egg. Exactly. Properly. Look at that one. Perfect one that perfect you have one. there. Myself and Tommy were going, now, how do you make the perfect poached egg? We'll be finding out a little later on. Now, Derek is getting in on the World Cup action this morning. How are you getting on, Derek? Yes, uh, we're live here in Kimmage Dublin 12, right across the morning. And we're saying hello to everyone in Lourdes. Uh, hey! Ahead of the game later on this morning. Dave Bertha is with us, your chairman of the club. Uh, Dave, very excited for the girls in green. It's a great day for the girls in green and, and especially for the club now that we're going to have now 70 kids in here today watching the girls play football. And this club dates back a long, long way, doesn't it? Since 1957, 66 years this year and back about five years ago we reignited the girls section in the club and it's literally grown from strength to strength. And they're all excited here this morning. Who's going to yeah. win, guys? <laughs> baby. It is beautiful. He's doing his keepy uppies. Uh, we'll be back with you in a few minutes. Of course, he's going to wreck the place right now. We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. Thank you very much, Sharon. Welcome down here to Lourdes Celtic Football Club. We're here right across the morning. In fact, we're going to be catching up with some of the gang. We've lots of drills, lots of soccer fun as well coming your way in the build-up to that big match later on this morning. Of course, Ireland taking on Australia at 11 a.m. in the first round of their campaign. Now, we're getting past 8 o'clock here together weather-wise. Let's take a look at how it's shaping up. And it is a dry and settled start here in the capital at the moment. Take a look at the map, though. We are still uh, seeing some shares scrape around uh, through parts of the northwest and across South Donegal through Fermanagh and into northern parts of Leitrim. But as we're pretty decent now as we edge our way through your breakfast time in those moderate northwesterly winds. Now, right across today, in fact, not a bad one out there today. It is that mixture of sunshine and scattered chairs. Those winds will moderate as they veer to the west. And we are looking at a slightly warmer day in store, a degree up from where we were yesterday. Top valleys in and around 16 to 19 degrees. Finally then, tonight it will all settle down for a time elsewhere. We're going to see cloud cover built through Connacht and up across Ulster. Once again, we're to see some patchy light rain, patchy light drizzle there to take us through tonight into tomorrow morning with overnight lows there back to 9 to 13 degrees. So that's how we're shaping up for now. For me and all the gang, big cheer, guys. <laughs> we'll be back again live, 8.35. <laughs> Chill insurance work harder so you can work smarter. We compare 14 quotes to get you the best deal. It's time now to take a look at this morning's paper, starting with the Irish Times. It's headline, no further action in majority of BlackRock abuse cases. Gardaí have said there will be no further investigative action into the majority of alleged clerical sex abuse cases at BlackRock College and Willow Park schools. Higher earners and the young bearing brunt of rental crisis. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. Younger people and higher earners are worse off here than the rest of Europe when it comes to housing costs. The examiner leads with scale of nursing home sex abuse unknown, Safeguarding Ireland has warned. The accurate number of older people who are being sexually abused is unknown due to disbelief that this abuse happens. 
It's official. We are building far too few homes as the top story on the Daily Mail. Internal documents from the Department of Finance found that 50,000 homes are needed annually to meet demand. The Herald goes with the Judge Slam's outrageous fees in Mago case. Judge Alex Owens has told Canoon cartel target James Mago Gately that he can have free legal aid to a maximum of €14,000 in his legal battle with the Criminal Assets Bureau. The star leads with dead sneaky. Nephew of deceased uncle has pleaded guilty to attempting to deceive a post office worker after trying to dis uh, collect a 246 euro pension belonging to his uncle Pallard Doyle. And The Sun also covers this story with on post mortem. And the mirror goes with Shoutrage. Guinness, Smithwick's, Carlsberg and Rockshore have been hit with a four cent plus fat increase as Diageo have increased its pricing for the second time this year. Now, not, not, not great. Let's have some good news stories, yeah. will we? Yeah. There are some lovely messages in the, here. The, 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 we're, we're looking great. Yeah, we're, we're all full in of support green, for the girls green, in green, green today. Yeah. And I like what there's a great picture in the front of the Irish Examiner there with all the young boys and girls out looking forward to today's match. It really is. Up is gripping the nation, Brilliant. like Megan says. Everyone in my area is getting the flags and the bunting out today to support our girls. What a huge opportunity to grow our game in this country. Come on, the girls in green. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we were talking that, you know, it is in the front of the papers, but where's the pull out of the, yeah, the, the poster team. of the team yeah. that you can stick up on the wall and really get behind it as well? And Sonia just said, when the men's team are playing the tournament, every other house on my road has bunting and flags out. Now I'm the only house with a flag out. We need to support these girls and we believe in them. I kind of think, though, if we were to get a result against Australia or, like, you know, pull out a big, big performance. It would, it would the really whole place would go yeah. mental. Yeah. But then you can't forget that actually getting to this World Cup yeah, is been a huge for Ireland. Uh, Frank yeah. said, I had to search high and low for an Irish jersey. I managed to get the last one in my local shop. It's ironed, fair play to you, and ready to go for 11am. Come on, you girls in green. And we're Frank, get that it on, on now and show us a picture. Send, Send us, us in, in the, the picture. picture. Yeah, because we've been getting some pictures in as well. Sarah sent in this picture of her little daughter, Anya. And there's Anya there, look at her. And she said, all ready for 11 o'clock, ready to go. Let's go on, on, yeah, fair uh, play to Tracy you. Tracy sent in a picture from her house. They've styled themselves out in uh, green this morning. Cheer on Vera's army down under. Oh, look at them. That is so That's good. Great. Love it. Oh, look at the Minnie Mouse one as well this there. Is, these are the sort of memories you'll have forever. Do you oh, know what I mean? Like, completely. It's like they go well. Uh, Robin sent in this picture of her daughter, Bonnie, who's heading off ah, to Montessori this Bonnie. morning. And is a vision in green. Look at her face paint. I love the old tricolour face and, paint. It's um, simple. A major well, World Cup fever works. in our house. My daughter Amber is a huge fan of the women's soccer. Here she is with a signed jersey given her to me by Anya O'Gorman as well recently. So no, we don't, we we don't, don't have, have that. We don't have that <laughs> We're getting loads of pictures in. Uh, so if you do want to send them in, we would absolutely love to see them if they are of children. Uh, we would also like to know that you are the legal guardian, of course. It's 89 six triple one triple one. But you know what? It's lovely to start the excitement yeah. to see. And let us know excited. if you're having viewing parties, where are they going to be around the country today? Mm. Lots great. of people having yeah. viewing yeah. parties. Send your pictures in. Yeah. And it's great that it's in the summer when the kids are off because they can all yeah. take part in it. And yeah. eleven o'clock. Great now, time. and up next, gardener uh, Catherine Garton is making a lovely lavender lullaby. A lavender lullaby with her floral wreaths. Okay, we're going to be singing lullabies, are we? We'll see you after the break. <laughs> Quid to go and see Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift when you yeah. can hear her play it right here in Ireland AM. Welcome back. We are in a lavender haze this morning, but it's not thanks to our Taylor. No, it's not. It's down to our floral friend, Catherine Carton, who's here. Morning. Good morning Good to you. Morning. And it's all about lavender, lavender this morning. And the smell. Nice and if there was smell of vision here this morning, you would absolutely <laughs> so smell would, yeah. It's beautiful. We'll all yeah. be in a sleep coma in a while. So there's a few different types of lavender. Yes, yeah, so I have um, English lavender. And I have some French or Spanish lavender. So on the table, you see, so this one here is an English lavender and it has like the smaller kind of yeah. flowers on top. It's called Hidco. And then I have a Spanish or also known as a French lavender. So you'll see these oh, in the garden centre. Yeah, no, I don't. And it has Yeah, because I bought lavender last week. I must have bought this because I would know. It probably was something, something like, like this. Something like this, yeah, because yeah. I've noticed that 
I have never seen those type of lavender. Yeah, so this is a French one. Now, if you are planting it in Ireland, the English lavender is the hardiest and it is the best one. It'll tolerate a frost. The one thing lavender hates, and I have punished it with, is soggy, wet soil. So it really likes, like, Mediterranean, free-draining soil. So the rain of the last couple of days, if you've planted yeah. it, is well, it, are they going to die? No, it'll be OK. So what I have here is I have some horticultural grit. So see that stony stuff? Yeah. If you're planting it in a pot, like a terracotta pot, if you mix this in with the compost, so it's not a compost you get in the garden centre yeah. or if you have your own, if you mix this in, like, maybe a third of the grit, that will give you lovely kind of drainage. Mediterranean drainage soil. And if you're planting it in a border, because <laughs> you bought lavender. It's too early. late. No, I just put the compost <laughs> into the pot with it. And the rain, sure, it's been lashing every day. Once you have drainage in the pot, and the, a terracotta pot is good as well, um, it, it'll be fine. And then yes. what's the story with lavender? Is it the sort of thing that, like, you said it's hardy. So will it come yeah, back again and again? it will come back. So the best thing to do to look after your lavender is harvest it after flowering. So this guy is from my garden. So once he stops flowering, I'll give it a cut back. Um, right maybe back. An, Don't be afraid to cut yeah, right, right back. It. Because what can happen is you can get leggy lavender. And I have an example of one I, I didn't cut back. I don't want leggy lavender. I don't want leggy lavender. Look at the leggy lavender now. You don't so if that. you look at the base of that, so see the way it's gone a bit woody and a bit leggy? Oh, yeah. You can't cut back to the old oh, wood. This. If you cut back to the old you wood, it might not flower. So it looks a bit miserable, it's a bit grey. So that's a really common problem. And what causes that is people not pruning it back um, after it has flowered. So around yeah. about August, September time, once they're finished flowering, like, don't be afraid to go like right back. Yeah, okay. Right but back. just cut back to um, where there's uh, green growth. So if you were cutting this back, you would cut it back here. So and you can have I some ask growth. you, if it gets leggy like that, is it gone? It's for the compost, yeah. It's yeah. very hard to come back from leggy lavender. Leggy <laughs> lavender. <laughs> we learn something new every day. Yeah. Something. When should you plant it? Um, springtime or autumn time, just to let it settle in the soil and then it'll flower, depending on the variety. Some will start in June, so July, August. So too late than only doing it last week? You be grand. It, do you know what? You're it'll special. be better next year. It'll be better next year. No, but like, they were had them in the, in yeah. the garden, in the garden shop, so... Yeah, no, absolutely. It'll just uh, it'll settle and it'll develop roots this uh, season and then next year it'll be nicer. Okay. okay so but don't forget to prune it. I won't forget to prune it. No, I'm good <laughs> at like, and I cut it right back. Yeah, the right back. I've been gardening here over the years. Is never be afraid to prune it right uh, yeah, back because yes, you get a really in. nice, um, yeah. but nice like flowers that now, next year. We kind of always plant it. It always dies. So obviously, I yeah. didn't know anything about this. If you have planted it, can you just kind of uproot it and mix it in now? Yeah, you could replant it. You yeah. Could move. The best time to replant will be spring or autumn. So you can leave it and wait until autumn. Next year. Okay. The best thing to do is think: Is it going to be soggy in winter? So if it's in a dry, sunny spot in summer, is that spot going to be? soggy in winter because they don't want to soggy be in, in winter in Ireland. <laughs> well, if you have like a, a patio, so the best place to plant it in your garden is if you have a dry spot. So like on a patio in a yeah. container or if you have, you know, from your garden where you kind of water a bit more, plant it in where it gets dry. They'll tolerate a bit of drought. OK. They'll tolerate yeah. a little bit. We They'll know, I sure see little. it, you know, in gardens all the time yeah. growing. It's beautiful. Yeah. Now, lavender. Yes. I, it just smells absolutely divine. The uses of lavender. We always yeah. think lavender in sleep, right? Sleep spray. Sleep, um, but also it's it's used in a lot of cleaning products. And I have some little lavender sachets here. So all of the little bits, as you see when we're making this, the little um, seeds will fall off. Yeah. Um, but I actually made, the one in your hand I made, I didn't make the other two, and I just put some of the leftover lavender bits in a sachet, and that's a natural moth deterrent, so that's why people put it in, in their, their drawers, drawers and, and their, stuff yeah. like that, yeah. I actually put it in my suitcase when I go travelling, oh, just to kind of Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, just to smell nice. Yeah, yeah, because it gets Good luck like um, leaving with these. He's always packing a suitcase. He'll be taking those <laughs> <all supplement. laughs> Um Now, you okay. have made the most beautiful... beautiful. Oh, thank Look at you. This. Read. I that's love lovely. this. That's so you're going to show whimsical. us how to do it? Yeah, so if you're going to make one of these at home, I'd give yourself like half an hour, but I'll show you how to get one started. Oh, yeah, OK, way. let's start. So, um, you, so need... you, get, you get, like, where do you get this stuff? So you can get a wire frame in, like, most craft shops online. Gotcha. Some florist places might even sell Lovely. You don't have to use wire. You could cut out a cardboard base. You could use straw. There's loads of things you can use as a base. Yeah. And um, the great things about these is these are reusable, so you can use these at Christmas then. OK, so how do you start? With so just I've started, one or two? you have your wires. Yeah. So if yeah. you want to 
just have your wire ready and then take a bunch of lavender, roughly the width of the frame, doesn't have to be okay. perfect. All right. And this is fresh lavender. I got this in Wicklow, actually. There was like a lavender sale and it was like three bunches for a tenner. So if you're going to make a lavender <laughs> wreath, I think I used... Go and, go and get four. a lavender sale. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it probably cost about 20 euros um, in bunches and your frame and your yeah. forest wire. That's good. Um, okay. So just place it on oh, like that. Your, yeah, and then wrap the wire, the wire around, around it. it. Probably yeah. about like twice or three times. Mm -hmm. Then I have a scissors there. You, you can even use mine. You can trim off the excess as you're going. All right. So like you can just trim the excess. Yeah. Bottom on it. Yeah. Here's a scissors. Why am I so crap at everything? Okay, that's that's done. So that's your first that's one. First one, and then you just build Keep on layering, that. Keep yeah. layering, And then what you can do is, if mine's a bit like wild and whimsical, if you want it a bit more compact, you can just um, tighten up your bunches of lavender. Yeah. So then you're just placing it over the next one, so you can hide the wire. Yeah. Okay, lovely. And then you're literally going around until you get to the end, and then what you can do is trim off the excess. If you find um, that your wire wreath is like a bit gappy, you can get sphagnum moss in garden centres. Oh, moss. So moss is used in a lot of floral displays and like table setups. To fill it out, it so, is. So like to fill in like any gaps. And oh, moss, moss is great because it like retains the moisture as well. And um, you can also use like straw and things like that. And you can use other grasses as well and you can mix it in. Like you could do like to lavender. To make a cost effective sort of a thing if you want yeah, to. Yeah, I totally get that. Because we're realistically we're probably not going to have enough lavender in our garden to make yeah. a whole frame. You'd no, probably have to buy bunches. Yeah. How um, long will this last for? It lasts, well, it's going to dry out. You can actually see mine is starting to dry out. So it's and then you'll that have purple. it, won't you? Yeah, if it, it will. Uh, the thing with dried flowers so is... Am I getting sort of getting, sort getting, getting there? there? So you would just keep going around the wreath and layering on. Oh. <laughs> I'm looking at both of us, and she. You can have mine. I mean, Catherine is the nicest teacher in the entire <laughs> world, but she's the person you get a gold star. So with this one on Alan, uh, if you layer on top, so you, I think, went underneath. So yeah, layer oh, on top layer on to top. hide the wire. So something like this. How long could you have that hanging in your house? I or you still get a bang You'd off get it. a couple of months out of it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> a whiff, a couple off. of months. A couple of months, but what happens is it'll start to lose its colour and it'll have a lovely kind of faded, dry yeah. effect. Would that cost you about how much? It cost about 20 quid to me. And you'd have for a couple of months? Yeah, a couple yeah. of months. Like, come on. Look, have I'm getting there, there. sort of. That is absolutely beautiful. And Catherine. also, if you didn't have enough lavender, like, you could just fill out the rest. I was going to say yeah. that. And just if you have put the spray. lavender there and put little bits around that, yeah. wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> so lazy. Um, where can people find you, Car uh, Catherine? DaintyDressDiaries.com. DaintyDressDiaries.com, <laughs> as always. Thank you so <laughs> much, so Catherine. Much. You're so Smells good. You're beautiful. so good. Sounds lovely. Now, Gold still, medal for everybody. Still, yeah. <laughs> still to come this hour in Ireland AM, we're back at the net. Uh, we're uh, <laughs> back at the net breakfast with Alberto Roxy. Yes, he's making eggs Benedict. Yes. Back at the net. Back at the net. Look at him. He's so sporty. <laughs>being cooked up in the kitchen this morning. And Alberto Rossi from the Intercontinental <laughs> Hotel is treating us this morning. We have four, we four different types of making eggs benedict. Oh, I lost count. I, I, oh. I got like here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. You know, <laughs> eggs benedict are, are classics, you know, and a yeah. lot of the time you go to the hotel or to the restaurant where you're staying and it is the ham benedict or mm. the smoked salmon benedict. And I love them and yeah. they're great. And then you can do what's called the Florentine, that's the, tom as the spinach. Okay. Or you can do yeah. a spinach and tomato. You can do a royal, that's the lobster. Oh. But the good thing is that eggs, uh, they tend to be eaten with anything. Yes. So what I did here, I did something a little bit different. I have, obviously, the egg benedict, that's the ham. Yeah. Then I have one with lobster. Remember, I made the lobster roll, so you have yes. the lobster yeah. mixed yeah. with the mayo, you have that one. Then I have the smoked salmon. Uh -huh. Then I have one that's just a crushed guacamole, well, crushed avocado with some tomato. Okay. You know, like you can call it guacamole, but it's not really. And then I have one that has nduya, Italian sausage, spring onions, and a little bit oh. of asparagus. What would your favorite be? 
Oh, for me, it would be the lobster. From the lobster the and lobster. then Duya. You know, but, yeah. but you know, I can't eat them all. Uh, no. Well, I no. plan on eating them all. But uh, the thing uh, is about myself and Tommy all morning have been going on, how do you make the perfect poached We're going to do one now. So okay. I have some already done because obviously I want to be uh, in advance here. But what we do here is you have a nice pot. What I said is on the recipe that I posted is you, you need to have like a deep pot. And I think I put 24 to 25 centimeters of depth for okay. the pot. Because you need to have enough water in it. And then it needs to have the egg dropping in and opening the egg white like that. So, so you have boiling water. Yes. Yeah. You put in vinegar. I brought a tarragon vinegar that we do ourselves because uh, it's just more okay. flavored. Okay. Now, can I, can I just get normal yeah. vinegar and put some tarragon into the Absolutely water? Absolutely, you can. If you want, you can. Otherwise, you can just use it in white vinegar. And then it's, it's like two spoons of oh, vinegar. Is that all? I yeah, you don't need in. much because it helps but then congeal. It tastes the vinegar. You don't want it to taste uh, the vinegar. No, no, no. It no, depends. You know, that's why I brought this one that's a little bit lighter. Obviously, if you, uh, if you use white wine vinegar, that will be strong. Mm. But you can use malt vinegar. Yeah. And what's yeah. the idea of the vinegar? So the vinegar helps the egg white to congeal, to get hard, to get hard. Otherwise, it just floats at the top, it makes a lot of scum in the water, and it doesn't go anywhere, OK? OK. So what we do is you have your eggs. They always try to have them as fresh as possible. Yeah. OK? What then, sort of level of boil do you have it at? Now, I'm going to bring it up to, this, to the hard boil, and then I'm going to bring it one down so it's like a medium simmer. You want it rolling, but not, like, popping out. Okay. Otherwise, you're just going to crack the egg and okay. it's going to break. So then... No pressure now, Albert. No pressure no now. Pressure. If I fail, we turn off the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so then I have you the egg. Perfect poached egg. A lot of people say, oh, you have to open the egg on a plate and slide the egg yeah, on the Yeah, that's what I do. Or into, like, a shot glass or something. Yeah, for us, in, but... for me, it works like this, that I just crack the egg gently on the side of the pot, then you go a little bit of a height on your pan and you drop it in like this. Right. OK? And can I drop another one then on top of that, or do you have to go around? You, I say uh, you can do two or three, but you you make you look where one drops okay, well, and you put that beside uh, it. They won't attach themselves. And that will keep it together. I mean, that cause... will keep it together. Like you can start to see that the that the egg white congeals and it goes. In Italian, we call these uh, eggs in a in a shirt because okay. it's like you know the, the, the egg goes around the egg yolk and it covers it. And you see, it's not hard boiling. Obviously, mm -hmm. I put into eggs so the temperature drops. Now I'll be, oh, it's not boiling enough. I put nine or ten and I yeah, crack the no. eggs. So you just have to have the patience. Take your time. Patience. And everybody, like, well, I'm sure when you're doing eggs benedict like that, it's a runny egg. So how long do you leave it in for? Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. And then from there is a soft egg. Then you have a medium egg that could be three minutes or four minutes. Okay. And then you have a hard boiled egg, a hard egg. I don't know why would you want that. No, I don't egg. know why you'd want a hard boiled But sometimes egg, uh, we get requests like that, you know? So what can you do? Well, and I then, didn't okay. enjoy mine at all. <sighs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then they come out like that, OK? Look so you have the different... down there. That you have the look. different call. And then what you do is it, there's always hollandaise on top, OK? Yeah. So hollandaise is a classic French sauce mm -hmm. that it is uh, egg, egg yolks. Then you call clarified butter or melted butter. You know, you How just... How much butter is in that pan now? I was saying that one there is probably 300 grams, but I only used about 180, 200. But it's mad. So you let the... The solid part of the butter yeah. goes to the bottom, and the, the liquid then is. So the, what you do you is you in. put your fire or your uh, induction at minimum, and it just melts the butter gently. It's, you're not popping it, you're not burning it, you know. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you separate the solids from the fat. So if so, you look in this pot, in this yeah. pan, you can see the fat at the top, and then white milky just substance at the bottom. Put it down, and then we'll get a look at it there. Yeah. See, and you only you yeah. want to use the, the, pa the, the part the of the top, the clear part. Fat. Yes, exactly. And then you have vinegar, a little bit of water, eggs, and you cook it over the bain-marie. So you cook in the egg, and then you add the, okay, the so, butter. So to start it off, then you hold it over the bain-marie with egg, yeah, like this. egg yolk, vinegar, and Egg water, yolk, and vinegar, just, I have it in the water it. like this, and I whisk like, it. Oh, OK. Because so what happens is you have to cook the egg to a certain level, and then it becomes fluffy. OK. And it kind of doubles up in uh, volume, and it becomes a little bit whiter. And then you add in... The butter, salt, lemon juice, and you're done. Lemon juice. Lemon juice, okay. yeah. You, acidity with eggs is always key. <laughs> and then me an you here. finish it like this, see, over the egg. I'm going to try the one with the Italian sausage. No, Very that's good. the one I'm having. <laughs> you, have to, you have to share. <laughs> and then you can... Uh, OK, I'm going to go with the lobster. Then. <laughs> then you make them pretty, you know. In, in this case, I brought here some uh, paprika. 
smoked paprika. paprika. Oh, yeah, smoked paprika on oh, top. Oh, wow, look at wow. that. Oh, yeah, oh. You know, and then a little bit of spring onions. You know, I always prefer spring onion for breakfast instead of normal onion that can be a little bit strong. A little like bit a paste. It's, oh, that's, we're, that's know, a feast. And sure. imagine you have this on the and you're the watching table, the match today. And you're watching the match. Now, in the it's Intercontinental, would you serve wow. in the Intercontinental Hotel? Would you serve it like that, with uh, the paprika and everything on it? No. We only serve the one with paprika with the lobster one. It's what we call the Royal Benedict. If oh, you come for breakfast, goodness. you can have champagne breakfast and have the Royal Benedict. That's lobster. Okay. Love it. Otherwise, okay. we serve uh, the usual. That's the smoked salmon. Alberto yeah. Rossi from the Intercontinental Hotel in Dublin. Enjoy Thank you so much. A oh, treat for us goodness. all this morning. Who Hope think we get so excited home. at breakfast <laughs> on <laughs> breakfast <laughs> television? <laughs> now, still to come, we're going to check in with Derek, and he's uh, gearing up for the World Cup match today. We'll be back in a few minutes. Well, the girls in green are warming up in Australia as they make their World Cup debut at 11 o'clock this morning. Can't wait. Come on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, Derek Artigan is at the heart of the football mayhem in, Kil in Kimmage is where he is in Dublin. Yes, over to you, Derek. Yeah, good morning, guys. Well, we were in Kimmage. We've now moved down here to uh, Dublin, uh, Crumlin oh. here in Dublin 12. Great excitement building here down at Lourdes Celtic FC ahead of that big game. Ireland, of course, their first ever uh, World Cup match later on, taking on the uh, host nation, joint host nation, Australia. I'm joined now by Karen McDermott and her daughter, Isabella. Karen, we're in the World Cup. Woo! Yay! Come on, Ireland. <laughs> great excitement. Absolutely. Um, it's, you know, it's great excitement here uh, this morning, like, we're so proud of the girls, like, for getting so far, you know, and I do think they'll do really, really well. Um, they're in a tough group. Um, yeah, yeah, let's talk about that group, because they're they're in a tough one, as you mentioned. They're up against uh, the Joint Host Nation Australia, uh, also yeah. Canada, who are Olympic champions. Yes, and they're also up against um, Zambia as well, which uh, is... Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria, yeah. sorry, yeah, which is, um, you know, one of, the, one of the great football teams. But I think, you know, we've done a lot of preparation. I think the girls are up for it, and I think we'll come out good. Um, I really think they'll do well. How are we Looking at team wise, I know we had an injury where Denise O'Sullivan. Yeah, so Denise O'Sullivan. Denise. Um, yeah, she got an injury there. She was the, in one of the pre-matches there um, during the week, and but I think from last night, I think she's fit now. She trained last night, so um, she's good to. She's on the team, so she'll be playing. Uh, a, a lot of pressure on the team as well to perform because, as we mentioned, they are in a tough group. 100%. Like, but you know, I think Vera and the girls, like they've done, like their preparation was amazing, and they've done the hard work now. So hopefully, it'll just pay off now when they're playing. So as you I mentioned. Had that game with Zambia. There was a, it was a good win over Zambia, a good game, and then we lost to, to France. Uh, that was a tough match for for the girls in green. I think sometimes though you need to have these tough matches. You know, like you know, sometimes when you lose matches, like sometimes you know, and then you to regroup and get the momentum back up again. So I think I think look, that's just one of them things, and I think we'll move on from that. Uh, and team I, we'll captain uh, Katie McCabe, she has rallied the troops. Listen, Kate McCabe, like she's a little trooper, like you know that way. She's you know. I think she's a great inspiration for the, you know, the team and I think for the girls, like, you know, she's one of our own, she's from Tala here and I just think, like, you know, she'll, you know, get them going, she'll get the momentum going and I think, I think we'll, I think we'll come out good. We'll come out good yeah. and in fact, just to let viewers know, we actually got a text uh, from Katie McCabe about uh, 10 minutes ago yeah. uh, to wish everyone here in the club the best of luck this morning that came into one of the mammies and yeah. she said to us, uh, best of luck guys and three green hearts, which, yeah. which is great. Um, big, big Irish support down under as well in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, the supporters, the people that have travelled, it's unbelievable. Like, you know, so they're saying that this is like um, Ireland playing at home. <laughs> so, uh, 80,000, I believe, yeah. in the stadium down in Sydney. Brilliant, absolutely. Like, and then, you know, it just shows you that the women's football, you know, has really come on and, um, and especially, you know, so many people travelling, like, and I'm just, we're just so proud of them. So. Grassroots level, this is where it all starts. Uh, you know, uh, Lourdes uh, Celtic FC, you have a great young group of people here with you. We do, yeah. We have teams from under eight to under 15s, like, and it's unbelievable. And especially now with, you know, the latest football, you know, the more girls getting, you know, involved, they want to come down, they want to play. They can actually see their heroes, you know. Oh, I can be like Kate McCabe, or I can be like Denise O'Sullivan, you know. So, and these are, you know, it's great. It's just it's great, great for, for the them country. to look up. And Isabel is here. Isabel, what age are you? 
Um, I am nine. You're nine. And how long have you been playing football? I've been playing football since I was um, three and I've been playing for six years. Six years and you're nearly ten now. And where do you play on the pitch? I play right wing. OK, so you'll you be scoring all the goals, yeah? Yeah, scoring all of them. Uh, scored all of them. And who's your hero? My hero is Katie McCabe. Katie McCabe, and Katie's the captain. And I believe you met Katie at one stage, didn't you? Yeah, I met her in Duns. Uh, you met her in Duns, were you out doing your shopping, were you? At an event. <laughs> no, she had an event. She had an event, and you met her there. What was it like to, to hang out with Katie for the afternoon? I loved it. Never seen her before. Yeah, so. and, and did she have a good chat with you? Did she give you any advice? No. No, sure, but it was good to hang out with her and, and spend some time with her. Yeah. And I know you're going to do some keepy uppies in a few moments' time. You're a star of the future. Do you want to play for Ireland one day? Yeah, I want to play for Ireland and Arsenal. Oh, isn't that Ar- Ireland and Arsenal? There yeah. you have it. Like, it's incredible, really. And, and they're looking at the girls down under and getting inspired. They're going to inspire a whole generation of, of young stars. Absolutely, 100%. And, you know, we've seen more people come into the club, more girls want to play football, especially since the World Cup. And, you know, it's great for the country. It's great for women's football. And I just think, like, um, you know, what the girls have done, like, this going forward is going to be, you know, it's great for the country. It's incredible. And yeah. hopefully they get out of this group and it's going to be like you know, Italian the, 90 yeah. Yeah. I mean, the all prep- over yeah. again. The preparations that they did, like, Vera and the girls, like, have done so much preparation. They put the hard work in. So now we just need a little bit of luck as well on the day. Yeah, so. absolutely. I can see the headlines now. Vera Pow Wow. Wow, yeah, <laughs> Isabel, girls, come in here because we're going to have a little bit of a keepy uppy challenge. Uh, Isabel, you're going to pick up the ball there. And so what's, what's your record, by the way? How many? You, sorry? 25. 25. All right. So, right. So, uh, bit of space there for Isabel. Are you ready? Okay. Three, two, and one. Off you go. One, two. Come on, girls. Give her a bit of support. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Ten. Off you go. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh, she got sixteen. Give her a big round of applause. Well done. <laughs> Uh, there's going to be great excitement as well here later on. 11 o'clock, the, the game kicking off. Yeah, great excitement here. We've all the girls down and some of the boys as well, so we're ready to go. Come on, the girls okay. are green! Who's going to win, guys? Ireland! 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 We know who's going to win. <laughs> Back to studio. Ireland! 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 And oh, yeah, I think you got about 100 there. Tommy was doing quite well there. He's having a great day. He's going to break a camera at some stage. There's lots more to come on Ireland Day, and we'll see you back here very shortly. Well done. You are very welcome back to Ireland Day. Coming up this hour, we're painting the studio green with football pride and your face pink with Barbie Bedlam. Uh, Mourne's getting all dolled up this morning, quite literally, Mourne. What's coming up? Yes, we are. Kayleigh Cashel is bringing the plastic, fantastic looks of the Barbie movie to life. Kayleigh, it's lovely to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. What are we doing? Because Barbie has taken over and it is obviously pink. Yes, pink everywhere. So I'm going to show you how you can take your everyday kind of smoky eye wing liner into this barbified glam. We're going to have lots of pink, lots of glowiness. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's great fun. Does it suit? It suits all face shapes, colors, everything like that. Absolutely. I feel like people are afraid of color, but I'm going to show you how to make it easy. There we go. I love it. That's going to be so good. And what else is on the way, Tomas? Beautiful. Very nice. Well, this Kenny's a movie buff. We could have done with Kaylee's Barbie makeover, though. I think. Brian Lloyd, are you feeling the Kennergy this morning? I am feeling the Kennergy. (laughs) Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Thumbs up to Barbie. Yes, it's giving full potential yeah we're just we it's, it's Ken off it's Ken off I we're love Ken it. off okay lovely we're feeling work. the Ken energy we're feeling the Ken we energy we are going to be talking me. about uh, Barbie Oppenheimer and also The Deepest Breath the new documentary on Netflix as well now Alan's outside having a ball of a time what else have we got yes Tommy I am look at the here we are ahead of the match here today we're going to be uh, meeting some young Katie McKe- God I'm getting good at this here we go look at this 
There we go. Yeah, we're going to be uh, meeting some mini McCaves here this morning. That's uh, coming up at 9.45 when we're going to be uh, putting myself and Tommy to a little football challenge when we know who's going to win that one, don't we? Here we go. Let's hear it. Oh, look at that. There you go. Derek. Derek's on the ball as well this morning with football fever. How's things going, Derek? Yes, absolutely, Al. Welcome down here to Lourdes Celtic Football Club. Yeah! Started building ahead of the big match later on. Jenny, in fact, how many members have you got in the club here? Because uh, um, uh, in the club we have 600 children here within the club. How many teams then? Uh, uh, we've 35 plus teams at the moment. And in we're growing from strength to strength. You're growing from strength to strength. And Robin, uh, who do you want to say hello to? Uh, I love Katie McKay, but I also love Tommy. Oh, you also love Tommy. Tommy, you have a big fan. Big wave to Tommy. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Tommy. Oh, how cute is that? She likes, she likes Katie McKay more. She likes Katie McKay more. <laughs> She's talking about Tommy Martin. Sorry, Sorry. Tommy. I'll, Sorry. I'll take that. I'll take High that. Five. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. Go again, go again, go Good again. Good morning. Ready? Good morning. Oh! We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. Yes, thank you very much, Sharon. We're live here in Crumlin in Dublin 12, right across the morning. We're down here with all the gang from Lourdes Celtic Football Club. Ahead of the big match later on, Ireland taking on co-host Australia in their first ever World Cup game. And best of luck to the girls in green. Now, slipping past uh, 9 o'clock here this morning, it is a gorgeous start here in Crumlin. Elsewhere, plenty of bright spells on the breakfast menu, albeit some hit and miss uh, light showers there to the northwest in those moderate northwest city winds. Now, right across today, it's going to be that game of cat and mouse, sunshine and Showers, winds will uh, veer to the west across the day. Top ten's a little bit warmer than what we've seen over the last two days as well. Uh, values in around 16 to 19. We could even reach 20 degrees in some spots. Right across then into tonight, mainly dry and settled for a time. Cloud cover building through Carth and into Ulster. Once again, patchy light, really, patchy light drizzle on the cars. They're scoring lots of goals there behind me to take us through into tomorrow morning with overnight lows there back to around uh, 9 to 14 degrees. So that's your weather for now. We'll be back again live 9.35. Chill Insurance work harder so you can work smarter. We compare 14 quotes to get you the best deal. Welcome back. The first goal in the World Cup has happened. New well, Zealand scored in the opening game. Their opening New Zealand. game. New Zealand are one nil up against Norway. It happened in the 48th minute. So first game of the Women's World Cup. There you go. Nice uh, one. I love this match. Kira can't help but feel slightly emotional watching all the build up. It must be such an exciting time for anyone who has been forced to emigrate and move to Australia. Hope the Irish community all come out and come together over there. And absolutely looks like they are. There's 20,000 yeah. they expect Irish supporters going to be in Sydney for the match at 11 o'clock. We've got Janine sent in a picture of Frankie and Billy Rose who are sporting their matching jerseys for the girls in green this morning. Look at that. Oh, my gorgeous. God. The little cuties. They're, they're lovely. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Tara Kelly says she wants to give a big shout-out to all the staff behind the team who have worked so hard, especially our sister Evelyn oh, wow. and her son Louis, who was very uh, lucky to meet the girls last year. We're all very jealous. Look at them oh, all there. Cool. All the girls oh, there. That's yeah. nice. Uh, Kira sent in this picture of her little girl, Sky, mm -hmm. who's been up, we're told, since the crack of dawn. Absolutely buzzing for the girls in green. Sky's currently playing on the under 10s for her local football club, but she's got Amber Barrett ambitions, we're told. Go on, Sky. Go on, Sky. She's even got the pose down, ready yeah, for her proper it. shot, doesn't she? And we've got Ava, Tomas and Kayla O'Dee. Look at them all. They're all hopping oh around with God. excitement. Look at the three of them. Aren't they gorgeous? And that's ahead of the match, of course, today at 11. Oh. Sitting up. Breakfast is done. I know them this morning. The twins have had their breakfast. They there you go. <laughs> be happy to hear that. And major World Cup fever in Olga's house, whose daughter Amber is a huge fan of women's soccer. Here she is with her signed jersey from Anya Gorman, no less. Go on, you good thing, Anya. Fair play. Look at that. Fierce excitement. It's just excellent. Thank now, you. we listen to this. We've got two pairs of family tickets to give away to see our girls in green take on Northern Ireland uh, this September. So head over oh. to our social media pages for all the details. This will be a challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, wow. up next, it is one of the biggest box office weekends in movie history, not hyperbole. And you know what? The weather isn't great. Perfect time to go to the cinema. Yeah, we're going to find out. Mission Impossible, Barbie, Oppenheimer. Uh, They're all there. Indiana Jones. Indiana yeah, all Jones. good. Yeah, we're going to find out though if Barbie and Oppenheimer are worth the hype. That's coming up after the break.
You're very welcome back. Now, from Barbies, Bombs and Breathwork for the deep sea. That's right, there's a mixed bag on the big screen and small screen this weekend. So here to whet our appetite with what to watch is Brian Lloyd from entertainment.ie. Hi Barbie. Hi Ken. <laughs> How Hi, are you? I love it. We're doing, love this it. happens a lot in the It's in the trailer. People yeah, it have is. seen this fair, as well. Yeah. So let's talk first of all about Barbie. Yeah. The movie, it is out on the 21st. This is a huge weekend for cinema. It is. It is really. What is, is this? about it is basically like a, a kind of like a meta story because it's obviously it's Greta Gerwig you kind of expect it to be a little bit smart and have a bit of substance so what it's going does on a meta story mean it's kind of like aware of itself self-aware okay. so Margot Robbie plays literally a stereotypical Barbie uh, in Barbie land so there's all different versions of Barbie there's President Barbie there is Dr Barbie but there's only one Ken, which is Ryan Gosling, but then there are different versions of Ken. Oh, okay. You know, you know okay, so, so like a President Barbie, but is that played by Margot Robbie? Is, no, 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 no it's played by Issa Rae. Oh, like, it's played right, by Issa okay. Rae. Like, Nicola Coughlin plays one of the Barbies in it cool. as well, like, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. there's different versions of Barbie, and they all have a job, and they all have something to do with They've got their own dream house and their dream car. But Ken has no car. Ken has no house. Ken just wanders around waiting for Barbie to turn up. To notice him. <laughs> to notice him, yeah, yeah, yeah. To literally look at him, yeah. Yeah, so one day Barbie wakes up with um, basically thoughts of death, and she wakes up put a patch of cellulite on her leg, which again already, yeah, you're kind of like, what? Okay. Barbie so has good. cellulite? Yeah. But that's what happens. Uh, she goes to meet Weird Barbie, who was played by Kate McKinnon. And Weird Barbie is essentially uh, a Barbie that's been played with too hard and has been put into the splits and her hair has been cut. And I know you've got daughters. No, Sounds Emma. like uh, my son got a hold of Emma's Barbie. Well, no, right. But, but funny enough, now, I talked to my wife about this. She had a Barbie as well that she like cut the hair off and yeah. set it on fire. Like, And yeah. apparently that was a common thing as well. Like yeah. there's loads of kind of like very uh, insightful kind of moments in Barbie where it's like women will look at this and be like, yep, my Barbie did that and I did that to my Barbie and oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's that okay, kind of yeah. like, it's very, very aware of itself. But uh, yeah, so Barbie, a stereotypical Barbie goes to the real world to try to discover why it is that she has thoughts of death and why she's got cellulite because the hope is, is that she can turn Barbie land back into mm -hmm. normal. A Do we have a place? Let's take a little take a look. look at it. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. I got us both ice cream. Cool. Hi, Barbie. 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 Hi, Ken. Hi, Barbie. 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 Oh, hi, Alan. There are no multiples of Alan. He's just Alan. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused about that. It's so, right? so good. Poor yeah. Alan. So this movie is, there are loads of things going on. Yeah. Also, hello to all of the stars in all of the planet. If you yes. were one of the actors in Sex Education that wasn't asked to be in this movie, you what feel you pretty do? bad yeah. Yeah, what that you, you do? didn't get into it. Um, when it comes to the acting, mm. what did you make of it? I thought it was brilliant. Like, I mean, to be honest, like, it's a very, very tricky subject when you when you kind of get down to it because like Barbie is a very kind of loaded idea for women. Like, you know, she is this like perfect kind of representation. She's got the perfect hair and she always yeah. knows what she's saying and doing and blah, blah, blah. This feminine blah. ideal that actually isn't something that can physically, a woman can achieve and also espouses values of consumerism that makes us buy and buy and buy. Just, you just look, yeah. you just should do the rest of the... No, that's you're right. That's all, that's all absolutely what they go into in the film as well. Like, I mean, I know you were kind of asked uh, last night about would you bring your daughter to see this? Absolutely. Like, I mean, I, I don't have kids either, but like, I mean, I would definitely bring my niece to this. Like, she's 13. But it's 12. So, so she's 13. Yeah. Yeah, she's 13, 14. Yeah. But it's like, 12, there's no, but there's no nudity. No, there is no, no not at bad all. language. I no. just don't, I don't think a kid will get it. That's the thing. They won't get it. That's the thing. Like, it is kind of geared, I think, more towards women as opposed to girls. Yeah. But like... Let's move on. How, yeah. how, how do you rate it? No, it's really good. Like, four out of five. Like, it's five. definitely yeah. worth a watch, okay. yeah. Yeah, you said it's fantastic as well. Okay, well, let's uh, talk Ryan about Gosling another movie. doing dance numbers. I'd watch it all day. Yeah. Uh, is Oppenheimer. Yes. Hillian Murphy, like, Oscar nominations potentially in definitely. the cards like this is getting rave reviews. It is, yeah, absolutely. In fact, I would not be surprised if Robert Downey Jr. got nominated for this okay. as well. He's that good. Best supporting it. actor, yeah. Yeah. So this basically tells the story of J. Robert Oppenheimer, who was the man who created the atom bomb. He set up this uh, massive science colony in Los Alamos. 
convinced a lot of scientists to come and work on the bomb. And then afterwards, he was accused of being a communist. And that kind of led into this relationship he had with this journalist called Jean Tatlock, who's played by Florence Pugh. It delves into, you know, one, I suppose, the guilt of making this weapon of mass destruction, how it was used by the US, and then his efforts to try basically convince people not to use the atom bomb ever, ever again. But instead, what happened was, was that, as we know, like you had the arms race and, you know, bomb, nuclear bombs were created yeah. at a massive rate afterwards. Um, Christopher Nolan, like he does tend to do this thing in a lot of his films where he'll have like three separate timelines, if you know what I mean. Love like that. Dunkirk had it, yeah. Inception had it, Tenet had it as well, and you have it here as well, because in one part of the film, you're talking to Killian Murphy's uh, Oppenheimer as he's going through this kind of um, security clearance briefing and he's recounting the story of his life. But then um, Robert Downey Jr. character is in the middle of the Senate hearing and he's trying to recount his relationship with Oppenheimer as well. Mm. So like, there are moments in it where you do kind of get confused. It does kind of get lost in itself, but that's the point. Like it's meant to be okay. confusing because it's meant to be like different people's um, Recollection and it's also about happening. quantum physics, so yeah. it's kind of that layered thing as well. Exactly, he makes quantum physics understandable, though. It right? Is. You're not going to go what? No, not at all. Yeah. Like, and I think that's a really kind. Of, that is a, a, a tell of someone that's really smart that they're able to take something really, really yeah. complex and explain it in a very conventional way. So you'll never be lost watching this film. But if there are moments are where you feel really confused, it's intentional. Yeah. Okay. So, How'd you rate it? Four and a half out of five. Okay, four and wow. a half, yeah. half out of five. Like it's three hours, yeah. like it's three hours long. It's really, really on a huge scale. The acting is incredible. Yeah. It's not to say that you should go see this over Barbie. I'm not saying that. Go see both. Oh yeah, Genuinely. Barbenheimer. Yeah, Barbenheimer. Yeah. And then sit there or and go, go and see Florence. Mission Impossible as well because it's epic, excellent too. Yeah, yeah. Um, or if you're going to be home, watch The Deepest Breath if you have Netflix as well. Yeah. It's a new uh, documentary out as well by an Irish director as well, Laura McGann. Yeah. What's it about? Uh, so it's about basically this thing called free diving, which is this sport where you essentially take one big breath, you dive down as far as you possibly can, and then you can reach, you know, metres up to like 100, 100 metres. Meters. Yeah, 100 Damn, metres, yeah. insane. And like the pressure that that actually puts on the physical body as well. So it's an exploration of the sport, but really what it's about is, is the relationship between two people. Alessia Zucchini and an Irishman who is this safety Steve diver. Keenan, yeah. Steve Keenan, Steve Keenan, yeah, who's actually up from my way at Glasnevin. And it basically talks about their relationship, how they came to know each other. You know, Steve Keenan was a bit of a, a wanderer, if you mm. like. He had kind of travelled around Africa, whereas Alessia Sacchini, from the moment she was a teenager, she knew that she wanted to be a free diver and was just completely yeah. obsessed by it. Um, it's a very... On the, like, I didn't realise it's that free diving. It's a very psychologically driven sport, mm. like, you know, that kind of way. It is really, like totally on your own you have to kind of get into a real kind of zone of like focus when you're doing it because you have no safety apparatus it's literally when you go down there is it's a horrific. very i mean they've put the like they're putting their lives oh, at yeah. risk. Like, uh, uh, but I gather the shots and yeah. everything in it are just Oh, no, it looks gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, like, and all the photography, the undersea photography as well that they do is incredible. Yeah. And, like, they use loads of archival footage from the real events as well. So it's, Where can people watch that? Uh, it's on Netflix. And what are you giving I give that, like, three, three, four out of five, yeah. Yeah, Laura McGann was on at the Six O'Clock Show. She was fascinating, yeah. amazing yeah. what yeah. she was able to do with that really great... Four, five, four, four and a half. And four, oh, no, it's a great week. Like, and the bear as well is on... Oh. Is on Disney Plus, we were talking about the last week as well. Yeah. Love, Bye. season two is just out. Brian Lloyd from entertainment.ie. Thank you, Thank Brian. Thank you, Ken. Bye, Ken. Bye, Ken. Bye, 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 Ken. Bye, Ken. Bye, Bye, Bye. Still to come this morning, Kayleigh Cashel is getting us Bobby Beautiful. Uh, plus, myself and Alan are tackling a football challenge with some beer pow prodigies. Perhaps all coming up in the final hour of Ireland then. Dance from Barbie, the Barbie movie. Oh, listen, Barbie's World's Takeover has claimed its latest target. It is, of course, the makeup world. TikTok superstar Kaylee Cashel is here to show us how to achieve this perfect pink Barbie look. Kaylee, how are you? I'm good. How are you? You saw the film, you've seen the film already. Yes. You loved it. Oh my god, it's amazing. So good. Everyone needs to watch it. It's really thought provoking, isn't it? It's, and funny. Yeah, unbelievable. So, so, so good. So come here to me. As someone 
who develops makeup products, who's getting ready for things all the time. When mm -hmm. something like this happens and it takes over yep. the makeup world, how do you find that sort of influence on culture? I love it. I think it's amazing. Like literally everyone is wearing pink now, which is like so good to see. And I wouldn't be a pink girly, but it's no. definitely got me. So it has 100%. Yeah. yeah. So you've got to be ready to go. Chloe is here with us today. Hello, Chloe. Hello, hello. We're going pinky, 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 as you can see. Yes. So if people want to do a pink makeup look for you, yes. It's all about skin prep and, well, it certainly is for me, it's prep and base. What Absolutely. do you do to get the best base? Yeah, so I think for that kind of flawless Barbie look anyways, you want to make sure that you're powdering the center of the face just so you really get oily um, and make sure you don't powder the whole skin. That's what can kind of give that cake look. The more powder that you wear, the more cakey that it can look. So just kind of keep it concentrated in the center of the face where you usually get oily. And then let the natural kind of dew thing just kind of go on the outer corners. A hundred percent, exactly. Okay. And that's where you can come in with your cream products and like your blush, which which is what I'm going to use today now. Perfect for the Barbie look. I'm going to be using a lot of blush because I wanted to show you guys how you can use products that you might already have and kind of incorporate it in because yeah. I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I don't have any pink eyeshadow or, you know, I want to wear a bit of pink. And it's like, well, let me show you how to do it. Okay. What you got. So again, for that kind of flawless base then too, you want to make sure that you're using a cream product and then go in with your sponge and just very gently. Now, does the sponge have to be wet? That mine actually isn't right now. I know it's a bit criminal, but is I, that criminal? A little it, bit. Okay. No, okay. It, it's okay. You can you can do it both. To be honest, I think it's like a preference. But um, yeah, you can use it dry or wet. But it's just whatever you prefer. And the placement of the blush here. Yes. You've gone very high. Yes. So uh, that kind of helps to lift the face. So it does. I know we are always kind of taught to apply it to the apples of the cheeks, right? Yeah. Well, that's if you want a more rounder, fuller cheek, absolutely. But if you want a more lifted, sculpted look, then you can actually use your blusher to kind of really lift up the face. Okay. Okay. Is what I'm doing right now. And say if your face is naturally dropping, like mine might be, uh, oh, is that a thing that you can do to create sort of dimension and bring it up a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely. That's what's great about makeup. It can just create a totally different illusion. But yeah, you can see I kind of brought it up almost into the hairline there, right? Gorgeous. Look at that. That is lovely. And, it gives and the way you too. just look to the side, I swear <laughs> to God, Chloe, that was fabulous. So that is, you've kind of just, high, you're bringing her face up. Yeah. And all, almost all the way back. All the way back, yeah. Okay, and up. gorgeous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the base. So you, as you said, you've just gone powder in the middle, then we've done blush. Yeah. What are we going to do for eyes? I'm going to show you now. So this is like your basic kind of say, like your smoky eye with your wing. So I'm going to show you guys how you can add a little bit of pink into it. So if you close down for me, Chloe, I'm literally going to go back in with the same blush. It actually has a little bit of shimmer in it too. So it just means that it kind of gives a glow as well. But again, you don't need to be going out and buying a million different things. You can use the blusher that you have already and just apply it to the lid. So this is going to look really well as well because it's actually tying in the blush color. So it's not like you're having a few different shades of pink, right? It's like the one tone and it kind of helps to melt everything in. And for, see, I love that now because it all makes sense, right? You're bringing the whole look together. Absolutely, yeah. Is, is that one thing that people need to realise, that so many of their products yeah. are multifunctional? They can absolutely be used for different things, 100%. And that's what's the thing about makeup, right? It's supposed to be fun, you're supposed to play with it. It wipes off at the end of the day, so don't be afraid to experiment yeah. and use products for different things. That is really lovely. Yeah, isn't it cute? Yeah, I think that's absolutely gorgeous. And, and you're going to put a little bit of... Yeah, I am going to amp it up a little oh, bit more on, because it's not? Barbie. This is the point. You could stop here, but like I said, it's Barbie. We need to go all out a little bit more. So I'm going to apply a little bit of this glitter, just the inner corner. See how that just kind of adds more yeah. of an iridescent. Anything that's kind of shimmery and shiny is going to drag the attention to the eye. And then also what I'm going to do, I'm going to go a little bit crazy with it. I'm going to apply it as a highlighter. Okay. Just to the skin. Because this is a Barbie look, right? Exactly. It's like you want to, now of course, you don't have to go as much, but I just want to show you guys as many kind of tips as possible, but just a little bit of a pink highlighter over your pink blush kind of really accentuates it. And it's a nice way of being able to wear pink without it being too intense or too crazy, you know? And when it comes to the color pink and yes. it comes to our undertones in our skin, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's yellow, bluey, mm -hmm. whatever, does that matter? Like, do you have to start using color wheels and matching and doing calculations? No, not really, to be honest, because I think pink is such, like, it's, we wear it in our blusher, right? So yeah. I think it's actually probably the easiest color to be able to transition into if you're wanting to wear a little bit of color, do you know that way? Yeah. Um, and I think pink suits everybody. It's a nice, soft, um, kind of feminine color, so I think it looks great on everybody. Gorgeous. What are we going to do next? Next, I'm going to apply a little bit of the blusher, actually, to the lips as well, just to show you. Again. So it's just bringing the tones in. Yeah, 100%. So using it on the eyes, face, lips, and just 
bank account? Will most products be able to do, like honestly, will yeah. you be able to kind of go, do you know what, I just have to make it work? You'll find uses for absolutely everything. Yeah, you, you'd be surprised. But yeah, see, see how it's like really like married all in together? Yes. It's so, so nice. And then the other little tip I'd give you if you're looking for like a super dolly kind of look, I kind of went a little bit extra with Chloe, but see where her lashes here? Yeah. I put the bottom mascara on and then I got my tweezers and I pinched them together. So it kind of gives more of that, you know, separated Barbie doll eye look. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not quite like a 60s twiggy, so whatever, but it is the yeah. Barbie sort of yeah. thing that's going on there. It's kind of a little bit more dolly. And then another top tip I'll give you for making your eyes look a little bit more doll-like and bigger is going in with a cream eyeliner like this and applying it in here to the waterline. So usually yeah. we would wear like black or brown, but if you go in with a cream, it actually gives like a way more dolly, dollified, barbified. And that, it is, there is such a difference between white and cream and what it yes. does to the eye, right? Yeah, so white is very stark. I sometimes find it can be a little bit too intense. If you're going for a very Barbie look, then yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. But I think cream's a little bit more natural. I can find white can sometimes make your eyes look a little bit grey. Yeah. So cream is just a little bit more natural. I mean, as natural as a Barbie can get, right? <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> it's so, look, look at you. Aren't you Beautiful. fabulous? Barbified. I know, we're running to Dunn's to do the shop now. Is that yeah. what's going to happen? Being all Barbie and everything. This is the gorgeous look uh, from Chloe there. You have been doing loads of these looks. Yes, I have, yeah. Online. Been, yeah, absolutely. But mm. I've been loving it. Loving it. Yeah. And you caught people out with an old Harry Styles trick. I know I did, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I pretended I... it was Harry Styles. you got to check Hayley out online. You'll be able to check everything there. And you can see it at uh, Kaylee MUA. And it's the same on TikTok and yep, Instagram, absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely, yep. Katie Cashel, thank you so Thanks much, so much for, for coming in. It's lovely to have you here. And uh, you didn't get your hands on the lads yet. We have to see if we can get One them. day, so I'll get lush. them. Um, up next, Alan and Tommy, they are putting their football prowess to test alongside the football stars of the future. We'll see you back here very shortly. Now the sun is shining on us outside here this morning and just over an hour's time the Irish women's soccer team will take their historic debut match for the Women's World Cup and Katie McCabe and her team, well they have become sporting heroes to thousands of young players and we're joined by two of them now, Emma Brady and Mary Mac McDermott from Row, uh, or Row from Arrow Harps Football Club in Sligo. Good morning to you both. Good morning, you, girls. The excitement building, are you excited today? Yes. Yeah. And the excitement has been brilliant. I've been looking forward to it. So tell us, how long have you been playing with the team? Oh, well, I joined at the end of last season, but I was playing with the lads, like, on our home club for the last two years. And was there no girls' team there? No. no. And so did you start going, we need a girls' team? Well. There was all rage joy, but like we just moved to the next team, which is Arrow Harps. So you know. And yeah. what's what's the interest with all your friends involved in Arrow Harps, Mary? They just. Do they love? Do they love playing football, though? Yeah. Yeah. So what positions do you play? Left striker. Wait Left striker. So oh, the striker. So you're going to be good at our little challenge. And what about you? Left back. Left back. So tell me, when you, since you've seen the team and they progressed to the World Cup, have you seen an increase in young girls who want to get out and play football? Yeah, actually, kind of mainly younger ones, more in primary school, come out and want to like, try and be like them. You know? Yeah. And have you a favourite player in the Irish, uh, current Irish team? I think it might be. My favourite player is Amber Barrett. Amber Barrett? Oh, Amber Barrett. Katie. And Katie Taylor. Katie Taylor. Not Katie, <laughs> Katie McCabe. <laughs> Another very that impressive very good, uh, female sports, sports there, person. Yeah. Okay, Emma, you're going to show us how to do it here first up. Oh, yeah. Because up you're front. a striker, so we okay. have a little challenge here. So we're going to have two balls each, and we're going to see how many we get. I think you get two points for getting in the top and one in the bottom. What do you reckon? Sound. Okay, have you let's got, see. Is that your rules, Tommy? Yeah? I'm not sure why not. <laughs> Making them up as okay. we go along. Here we go. Right, first one up. Oh, it's run away on it you. It kind of is, yeah. It's been okay, we've 20 okay. seconds oh, on quick, the clock. We need to go. 20 seconds. Look at 20 Where seconds on the clock. Off you go. Nice. Okay, another one. Here you go. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Now, Mary, you're up. Go on. Go on. You've 20 oh. seconds. Oh, what? Oh, Mary, good one. Do you want to have another go? Two feet. Oh, you're showing off. You are. Right, one more each, just so you can try and get one in. Here we go. Emma, you're up. Oh, for love, <laughs> And here you go, oh, this, Mary. This is only a demo to show us how to do it. We've... Oh! Look at that! <laughs> High five! That's brilliant. Well done, well okay. done, Emma Rice. So, that was a demo. <laughs> Myself and Alan's turn. Don't you? I was... 
I was there earlier on taking the ball down. Okay, Tommy so we, kicked me. Oh, sorry. Okay, so, so now we have 20 seconds. So, okay, is the clock ready? 20 seconds, Tommy, your time starts now. Okay, no good. No. <laughs> No. Oh, yes, that went in. No, it didn't. It did. It did not. Oh, it did. It didn't. No. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. No. Oh, one. Oh, yeah. Can I kick him one? Two. Oh, yeah, okay, two. I kicked him one. Uh, three. Oh, three. three. I think that was four. No, uh, did you get four? Okay, we'll give okay, you four. Here we go. Right. Give Tommy four on that. Okay, here we go. My 20 seconds. Okay, hold on a second now. All right, we ready? My 20 seconds starts now. Oh, no, this is oh. Oh. Ah. I was doing Tommy! <laughs> <laughs> There's one behind you, Alan. <laughs> Lads! <laughs> Please, will you kick me? <laughs> will you there we have it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got one in, did he? Oh, God well almighty. Done, Alan. There you go. You Look were you. Uh, cheating. I was <laughs> Ireland today. You're Australia. A uh, big thank you, of course, to Air Max Inflatables, who gave us the penalty shootout. Check them out, airmaxinflatables.com. You. Oh, Brett. Thanks, girls. Thank you so much. And the match, though, is going to be great Amen today. Day. It thank really you. is. Cheers. Great. Right, that's almost time for uh, today's show, but over to Murand, what's coming up? Well, now, wasn't that lovely with uh, that competitive Barbie over there? Joining me now is Kildare singer-songwriter, who is no stranger to going viral with his ridiculously catchy tune showing support for some of our top athletes. His latest song is Girls in Green, and here to tell us more is Mick Constantine. Hello, Mick, how are you? I'm not too bad, are you? I've spoken to you before about your viral songs for the lads' yeah, yeah. soccer teams. You go for it. Girls in Green, it's up how many views now? 700,000? Something like that, yeah. Something yeah. It's like going that. well. What is it with you and these viral songs for sports teams? Obsessed with this? I don't know. I'd say some people are probably sick of me singing songs about uh, sports events. They're but, not, uh, though. People get really behind them. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it seems it's gone well, but uh, I think it's a feel-good factor for the team anyway, so any bit of a song, people are going to get behind. When do you... Because in all fairness, you know, Jackie's Army is something that we all have in our yeah, head all yeah, the time. Yeah. When you kind of sit there and go, right, I want to get... It is kind of to get people in the country singing and behind a team, right? It's for the joy something of it. Something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I just sit at home and just keep strumming and singing to myself until something kind of catchy comes out and then How just long go with before it. a big sporting event? Obviously, we've known that uh, the women have been heading over to Australia for a while now. Um, I had the idea in my head for a good while and then, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I tried to give it a go and yeah, yeah, yeah. So. A couple of weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it takes no time at all. Sometimes it can take a while. But. It can do that. You're, like, you're a teacher, but you're... You're on career break, are you? You're doing the music full time? Yeah, so two years in career break doing the music full time, but I'm back in September, unfortunately. Are you going back in September? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're delighted to have me back, I'm sure. I'm just about to say that, like, the ukulele classes will be going like you wouldn't believe, isn't that it? Something like that, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Were you mad to have a go with that? Uh, I might have a go in? afterwards, yeah. I was just about to say, Mick yeah. is unbelievably I reckon I get four or five in, maybe. Oh, competitive Barbie number two here. Now, coming up on tomorrow's show, just to let you know, Ted Lasso's Jeremy Swift will be showing us his musical skills and a Limerick comedian, Carl Spain, will be stopping by. But for now, it's girls in green. Come on, you girls in green. Come on, you girls in green. This is Mick Constantine. Take it away, Mick. All began with a tough start against the Swedes, but responded in Finland with victory. Though the campaign didn't really kick off till we brought George to Tala and thumped them 11 0. Another four results booked the playoff place was the Scots in Hampton Park we had to face. So, what a magical night! Well, it was destiny when Amber Barrett got the winner and we made history. So, come on, you girls in green, what a journey it's been! And now the Countries behind this team of all the fans and us, we're gonna have the most. From Sydney to Perth and up the Gold Coast, flying the flag on the far side of the world, inspiring Irish boys and girls. There's no stopping oh, this Irish machine. Come on in. So come on, you <laughs> girls. Come on, you girls in green. Side, come on. And New Zealand and us, full of thousands of our own. And the atmosphere will be like playing at home. So for Vera, Katie, and the rest, it's all set up. To go all the way and win the World Cup. Woo! So come on, you girls in green, what a journey it's been. And now the whole country's behind this team. Of all the fans and us, we're gonna have the most. From Sydney to Perth oh, and up the Gold Coast. Flying the flag on the first side of the world. Inspiring Irish boys and girls. There's no stopping this Irish machine. 
so come on you girls, come on you girls in green. very much well, yes of course a massive come on you girls in green playing today in sydney in front of 82,000 supporters and of course this whole nation here in ireland is yeah. it 100% buying them so the kickoff is at 11 o'clock we oh. hope it goes fantastic yeah. come, come on come, come on, on you girls, girls in green best of luck come on, 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 on.